Hi friends. We're gonna read another story together today, but first we're going to talk about drawing conclusions. Now, I don't mean drawing as in drawing with a crayon or a marker, making a picture. This is a little bit different and we'll talk about it. So authors, when they're writing a story, they don't include every single little detail about what a character is thinking or how they're feeling or what's going to happen. They don't include all of that. If they did, books would be so long and honestly, they might even be a little bit boring because they tell you everything. It wouldn't give you room to predict things or guess what's going to happen. So good readers are like detectives, all right? And what good readers do is they take what they already know. So what I know about a topic, or maybe I've read a book like this before, or any past experiences I've had, whatever is in my brain, everything that I know, I'm gonna take what I know and I'm gonna put it together with clues from the text this could be words, you could look at the pictures, any clues that the book gives you. So you're gonna take both of these things, what I know already and what the book is showing me and I'm gonna put them together to draw conclusions about how a character is feeling or what a character is going to do or what a character is thinking or what's going to happen in the book. So I just got this book in the mail called Geraldine and the Most Spectacular Signs Project. And I thought we'd read this to practice drawing conclusions. Geraldine and the Most Spectacular Science Project. Now I'm gonna draw a conclusion about what this book is gonna be about. I'm gonna use my clues from the book. So I see this girl, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that she's Geraldine and I see outer space and some gadgets and my title. So I'm gonna use what this cover is showing me with what I already know. I already know that space is usually a topic of science and you can do a science project in outer space. So I'm gonna draw the conclusion that this is Geraldine and she's gonna make a science project that has something to do with like the moon or planets or stars, something about outer space. That's the conclusion I'm gonna draw just from the cover and what I already know. Geraldine and the most spectacular science project. I love being a troublemaker, shouted Geraldine. Let's all go to lunch right now. Yes. Geraldine was known as the loudest second grader in Pinewood Elementary School. The teachers called her Feisty Geraldine. To the children, she was just plain silly and often a bit mischievous. Instead of paying attention in class, Geraldine spent the time daydreaming about becoming an astronaut. She thought about soaring through the sky in a rocket ship, floating and bobbing weightlessly in outer space. She was totally fascinated by spaceships, stars, the galaxy, and most of all, visiting Mars. Geraldine had a wild imagination and loved creating unusual gadgets. She even took her mom's old toaster apart and added the pieces to her growing pile of old wires, screws, and assorted gizmos. Then she used the parts to build her own inventions. And fine creations they were. Geraldine's favorite inventions were her portable tissue dispenser for cold and allergy sufferers and her unique solution to wearing eyeglasses in the rain. Unfortunately, her inventions greatly affected her mom's and dad's daily routines. Now let's take a look at this picture. What conclusions can you draw 
about how her parents feel by using what you already know and clues from the book. What conclusions can you draw about how they're feeling right now? One day, Mrs. Headley made an exciting announcement that really caught Geraldine's attention. Class, she announced, we are going to have a science contest. The winner will receive first place trophy and the title of best second grade scientist. <gasps> what? Geraldine thought as she looked up from the spaceship she was drawing on her math paper. A science contest? Really? A science contest? This must be my lucky day. Geraldine listened carefully, which was quite unusual for her. Why would she be listening carefully now? She is usually not listening. Each year, we award a special trophy to the student who creates the most remarkable science project. Only one student will win first place. This was exactly what Geraldine had been waiting for, an opportunity to show her classmates and teacher that she was not just a troublemaker. I can really do this, thought Geraldine. Right after school, Geraldine hurried home to begin her project. Her first challenge was figuring out what to build. She started by gathering her piles and piles of gadgets, screws, and electronic parts. She tried to envision the most spectacular science project, one that would win first place. And we've been learning about time this week. Even though this clock doesn't have numbers, can you figure out what time it is? She spent days measuring, cutting, fastening, and gluing her contraptions into various creations. They were unusual. Some even worked, but nothing was remarkable. Nothing would win the contest yet. One evening, Geraldine went out to her backyard where she loved to lie in the grass gaze at the stars, and look for her favorite planet, Mars. She made a wish on each star she saw. Her wishes were all the same. I wish I could think of a remarkable project that would win first place. Suddenly, a brilliant idea popped into her head. Hmm, that's it, she shouted framing a circle with her right finger and thumb, looking through it with her right eye. I'm going to create telescope eyeglasses that will make it possible to see Mars from Earth. Geraldine worked frantically for days. She rummaged through her piles of gadgets and gizmos and found her father's old eyeglasses. She carefully removed the lenses from her mom's old camera. These would all be useful in bending the light as it reached the telescope. Next, she placed the lenses on opposite sides of an old paper towel tube and reinforced it with heavy duty tape. By placing a small mirror between the lenses, she completed both optical tubes Finally, she trapped both tubes to her dad's glasses using a strong glue that she had found in his shed. She is working hard. Geraldine sat back and admired her invention. At last, her masterpiece was complete. She ran outside to try it and it worked. She was sure that she could see Mars. The day of the science contest finally arrived. Geraldine and her classmates were busy displaying their projects. Joshua revealed his erupting volcano, which spewed clay lava all over Mrs. Headley's desk. Uh-oh. 
Timothy displayed his remote-controlled solar system that showed all the planets circling the sun. Annie arranged her miniature ecosystem and explained how certain things affect the environment. Oh, all really cool projects. Here's our classmates. Here's Geraldine. I wonder how she's feeling. She looks pretty confident to me. Then it was Geraldine's turn. As she walked to the front of the room, she heard her classmates whispering. One said, she'll never win. Another said, she's too silly. Still another added, all she does is daydream. I'm not being very kind. Geraldine didn't care what they said. She knew she was about to reveal something special. She stood in front of the class, proudly explaining her invention. The class became silent. Everyone stared, their eyes wide open. No one uttered a word. They had never seen such an amazing invention. Then one at a time, Geraldine let each of her classmates, and even Mrs. Headley try the glasses. Geraldine had finally proven to the class that they were wrong about her. She wasn't just a mischievous daydreamer after all. She was a scientist. What conclusions can you draw about who's going to win this contest? What do you think? Mrs. Seedley happily awarded Geraldine first place. Geraldine, said Mrs. Seedley, as winner of the science contest, you have now earned the title of best second grade scientist. The trophy is yours. Geraldine smiled as she gazed out the window at the beautiful blue sky. Thoughts of Mars came floating into her head. She was daydreaming once again. This time, she would see herself defying gravity, soaring through space to become the first astronaut to ever land on Mars.